Hi everybody, it's Crystal. I hope everybody is doing well and staying safe. Uh, welcome to my channel. Please excuse my mess in the background. I'm boxing some stuff up to mail. Um, but today I'm going to be doing, uh, showing you some yarn I got from a small yarn company. I always like to support those. Um, this is from a yarn company called Brooklyn Tweed. Maybe many of you have had, um, had that yarn. I do believe they sell it at other places other than their own website. So, uh, but I purchased it from their uh, particular website, brooklyntweed.com. Um, and it is located in Portland, Oregon. Um, it shipped really, really fast. I live in Illinois. I uh, purchased it. They shipped it to the next day and it was here in like two days. So it was super fast. Do so you guys want to see what's inside? So... And this is, it's nice, it's, it's, I like it, the extra care that smaller yarn companies take with their yarn. It's nicely bagged up here. Well, why don't we take a look, shall we? How exciting. All right. So, um, this is all going to be wool, because I like wool, and, uh, you know it's hand dyed yarns why don't we see so here's a nice little card that's beautiful why don't i read uh, read it real quick it says we want to thank you for choosing brooklyn tweed for your next project i started brooklyn tweed in 2010 with a belief that creating breed specific wool yarns in the highest quality here in the u.s was still possible more than a decade later we continue to pursue this mission and passion the hanks you received today have passed through many caring hands on their journey from the open range ranges of American, the American West all the way to your mailbox. Your purchase supports a resilient textile supply chain of skilled tradespeople in a multi-generational family businesses. The ranchers, the sorcerers, the dyers, the spinners, and the designers who have made this yarn possible. Thank you for allowing us to continue doing work that gives us joy inspiration and purpose and most of all we hope you love our yarn with great gratitude jared flood the founder of brooklyn tweed that's very nice so everything from the sheep that it comes from or, or the uh fiber the animal fiber that it comes from all the way to the dyeing process and the spinning process it's all u.s done so let's check it out shall we all right Welcome to the flock. That was a knitted pattern for a wash rag or a coaster or something. All right. All right. Well, I can't knit. No good for me. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I don't have a tutorial for this sweater. Speaking of knit, this was a gift to me from my good friend, Gary. I love this so much, Gary. Um, from the YouTube channel Urban Yarn. I will put a link to his channel below. Um, he's one of my favorite YouTube channels. I highly recommend you subscribe to him if you have not already. I do have a tutorial for this hat though, and I'll link that below in the description box. And I also, also have, I have like 140 hat tutorials on my channel. Check them all out if you get time. But yeah, I like this one a lot. So, all right, let's, let's begin. So this was a free gift right here, I guess, because I didn't order it. And it just came in the box. It is, that's the name of the yarn. I'm probably not going to be able to pronounce a lot of this stuff, so I'm just going to show it to you here. It's 100% American Merino wool, source spun and dyed in the United States. Uh, fingering weight, 42 yards. So this is just kind of like a little sampler, I think, of, uh, you know. You know, I could put a little hook on this and use it as a keychain. Sounds like a good idea to me. That's my dog running around back there. I'm sorry if you hear that. Okay, let's see what we got here. Ooh, hoo, hoo. That's pretty. Now, everybody always asks me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to answer this now. I answer it quite a bit, but I'm going to answer again because people still ask. What do I do with all this yarn that I buy? What do... Can you stay, always say, can I see your yarn stash? I don't have a yarn stash. I keep... Two totes of yarn for myself um, that I use for tutorials and whatnot. And I give the rest away um, 
through through a lot of ways. I uh, give away through giveaways on YouTube. I give away to uh, other YouTubers. I give away to people, uh, my uh, YouTube friends, subscribers, through other ways that I won't mention. Um, I give it away to a uh, lot to my neighbors. I have a couple um, neighbors that live next to me at my other house who are on, are low income, fixed income, so I like to help them out. They get a lot of my yard. Um, I put it in mystery boxes sometimes and, you know, sell it that way. Um, but no, I don't have a yarn stash. I don't have a craft room here. This is my craft room and it's my bedroom. So this, <laughs> this is it. So when I buy yarns like these, um, or any yarn actually in general, whether it be a big yarn haul or a small one, I most of the time will give it away in some way or another or put it in a mystery box. Um, I buy it, the people are like, why do you buy it? I buy it because I like to look at yarns that I've never seen before. I like to touch yarns that I've never seen before. That's why I do it. That's the only, and then I like to give it to people. That's the only explanation that I can have. So it's a misconception that I have tons of yarn because I buy tons of yarn. I give it away or put it in mystery boxes. So that's, that's, but I, you know, usually um, my hand dyed yarn, I'll usually keep a hank or two of it to make myself a hat. And then I'll give the rest, you know, to someone else or put it in mystery boxes or whatnot. You know, I donate to charities on YouTube. Like people are having options for certain charities, you know, I'll donate mystery boxes to that. And I don't know I'm talking about that, but that's because people ask me that all the time. What do you do with it all? Because you can't see it because I don't have it. <laughs> that's why you can't see it. So that's what I do with it. I buy it to look at it and give it away because that's my pleasure. That's what I enjoy doing. I like to touch it. I like to feel it. I like to look at it and I like to give it. And uh, that's it. That's it. There's no other reason. Okay, let's begin. So that's the name of this one. I don't want to try to mispronounce things anymore. So I'm just going to show you what it says. I'm not good at p p pronouncing things. Okay. American Merino Wool, sourced and spun in the United States. Brooklyn Tweed, hand wash, lay flat. Um, let's see. Worsted weight, 104 yards or 95 meters. Um, so it's a four weight yarn. That's pretty much all it says. It doesn't have any grams or anything on it. Um, so I would imagine that it's probably 50 grams. The color I have here is called Cloak. This is a very, very beautiful color and it, it feels very good. Uh, I like Merino though, so mm, it smells good too. So this one would probably, I don't know, I haven't looked at them all. This is the first one. I'm like, I'll probably be a keeper. I don't know. But if you look close, you can see the specs. I love the dark. It's it's like a brownish burgundy color. More brown than burgundy, but it does have a tint of a burgundy, dark burgundy. And it. it's very, very pretty. I like the flex in that. So as you can all know that when you buy from a smaller yarn company, you do have to pay a little bit more of a high price for that. Um, so let's see how much these cost. These were $13.75 a hank. I got two hanks. Two hanks equal together uh, 208 yards and that would have been $27.50. You know that's about what hand dyed yarn runs nowadays. I don't think that's a bad price. I'd pay that for it again. I think that's fair um, with all things considered that every aspect of it is from the United States and um, it's hand dyed, hand spun, you know, beautiful. I like that one. All right. I do have, I did use a coupon code. I'll get, I think I got 10% off. I'll tell it to you at the end. Ooh, another one. Arbor. Okay. So that's the type of wool it is. Feels good. I remember these are all wool though. So, you know, it's scarfable though. I would, I would wear that against my skin. Oh, this says a little bit more. This one says the wool is sourced in Montana and South Dakota. It's spun in Springvale, Maine and dyed in Rutherfordton, North Carolina. Interesting. Isn't that interesting? Now this is a DK weight. DK stands for double knit. 
which is a lightweight number three. Uh, yeah, it says 50 grams, 145 meters, hand wash, lay flat. I can only assume that these are all going to be hand wash and lay flat. So I got two of those, a DK, DK weight, 145 yards each. So we're just going to say about 300 yards of this one, the Arbor. They were $15.50 a piece, so that would make them $31 together. Again, I don't think that's a bad price for the yarn, you know, considering all its sources. You know, as I said, being everything about it being here in the United States. And again, I don't think that that's a bad price. I love the color. It's called Burnish. Burnish. That's pretty. But brown is my favorite color. All right, what's this one? Ooh, dapple. 60 merino and 40 organic cotton. It matches almost. Well, now that I hold it up, it doesn't match at all. <laughs> all right, so this is, the wool is sourced in Colorado. The cotton was sourced in Texas. Um, the yarn was spun in Two Rivers, Wisconsin, and it was dyed in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Awesome. Again, this is the DK, so it's a lightweight number three. 165 yards, 151 meters, or approximately 50 grams. Um, hand wash, lay flat. This color is called a medallion. So if you look at it closely, it is that, you know, mustardy color that I love so much. And it does have white flecks in it throughout. Feels good uh, for, you know, a cotton merino blend. Definitely scarfable. I can make some more gloves out of that, maybe. A different design? I don't know. I already made two pair. I don't really, I guess I don't really need any more gloves. Okay, so the dapple, the dapple is $14 a hank. So together, they were $28. I'm only saying together because they're kind of smaller hanks, you know what I mean? Um, they're only 50 gram hanks and not 100. So uh, that's for over 300 yards of a DK. Perfectly fine with me. I would pay for that. Again, that's a nice yarn. I like that. Oh, I really like this one. I think I saw this one and I thought it was so pretty. They didn't have any colors of it, but I don't care because this is probably the color that I would have chose anyways. Quarry. And that's the yarn again. Or the wool. This one is a bit uh, grabby. Which, you know, I probably wouldn't wear a scarf out of it, but it's definitely hat making material for me. So good hat. Uh, make a material or sweater if like uh, you're gonna wear a, a shirt under it, which I always wear shirts under my sweater So I'm you know, making a sweater out of it would be cool um, The yarn or the uh, wool is sourced in Johnson County Wyoming spun in Harrisville, New Hampshire and dyed in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. That's so interesting how they put that on there This is a chunky weight, which is a bulky number five 200 yards 182 meters Hand wash, lay flat. This is a uh, roving style. My favorite. Bulky five, my favorite. That's nice. That's a nice yarn. I like that one. So, like I said, though, but it is. I wouldn't make a scarf out of it. I wouldn't wear it against my bare skin because it's a little stiff. It certainly is beautiful. The color is called citrine. Um, it's very, very much my, my colors. And if you look close, you can see little specks in there. Now they did have a brown one. You know, my favorite color is brown with the multi-colored specks, but unfortunately it was sold out. And this was my second choice and it wasn't sold out. So I got this one and I have enough here. What did I say? 200 yards. Uh, that's enough for me to make a hat. Um, the quarry is $21 worth every penny. I love that. That's beautiful. Ooh, it's going to be hard to pick a favorite. They all smell good, too. Okay. Another little bag here. And that's that's my bag here <laughs> of, of stuff. Let's open it up. Okay, so they had this cool yarn called Tones, okay? And if you go to their website, they had all different colors. And it showed you the color. And then what you could do is you could buy an undertone version of the color or an overtone version of the color. So these are both the same color. It's called Granita. This is what it looks like. If you went to your website, it'll show you the Granita color. And this is the undertone. 
color and this is an overtone color. So they're the same color. One is undertone, one is overtone. Let's read about it. So it's an American Colombian wool source spawn and dyed in the United States. They all say that. Those go great together. Of course, they're the same color. Just one's under, one's over, overtone. Um, this one is number four weight 140 yards or 128 meters hand wash lay flat it doesn't say anything about the supply chain it says that you can look inside for that but i'm not going to pop the label because more than likely i probably won't keep these um but it's very it's it's again it's a little bit stiffer of a wool but i think it'd be good for hats or sweaters something like that it's not too bad, you know, it's not the worst I've ever felt. But they go really pretty together. And the tones, it was is $13.75 a hank. So together, um, they're $27.50 for the both of them, you know what I mean? And that's for 280 yards of a four-way. Good deal. Of course, you could buy two of the same color. I just wanted to get an overtone and an undertone to show you on that. I did buy them in another color, which I like the color of these. This one's called, this is the same yarn I just showed you. This one's called Persimmon. Isn't that one pretty? Ooh, that one's beautiful. I love that one. This is the undertoned version, and this is the overtoned version. So cool and so interesting. I've never really seen a yarn company do that before. Um... So yeah, everything, all the specs are the same and the price is the same. Those two together would make an amazing hat. Um, you know what? I've always wanted to do a Harlequin hat, a Harlequin stitch hat. Of course, I'd have to do a bottom up probably, but that would look really pretty. Hmm. I'll think about that. All right. I have one more yarn to show you, and then I have one more thing to show you. So this, did I already show you this? Hmm. I guess I did not. This is their shelter yarn, and it's again. This is is that um, type of yarn. This one's a little bit stiffer than the merino. Um, this is it does say the the wool is sourced in Johnson County, Wyoming, spun in Harrisville, New Hampshire, and dyed in Philadelphia. It's really interesting that they put that on there. It is a worsted weight, so it's a four weight, 140 yards, 128 meters, hand wash, lay flat. So again, this one's a little bit grabby, not one I would wear against my skin, but mm, smells good. I am a wool lover of all kinds, and I don't care if it's stiff or scratchy. This would be very good for felting as well. The color of this one is called Soot. How appropriate, since today is December, uh, what is today? 18th. Soot. Santa Claus the fireplace that, that's that's a nice that's a nice color name it does it looks like charcoal doesn't it i like that that's very pretty that's nice so the um the shelter is 1550 a hank together 31 um dollars for 280 yards of a four four weight so there is not any of these that I would buy again, but you have to remember that I love wool. It is my favorite fiber. Any type of wool I like. I like wool. I don't care if wool is scratchy. Um, I do have favorites. You know, I like this. You know, I like softer wools like alpaca and cashmere, but in merino. But even if a wool is scratchy, I still like it a lot. So, but some of these are not going to be for everybody because some people don't like a scratchy wool. So, um, a lot of them that are made with this type of uh, fiber here are the ones that are a little bit scratchy. The merinos are fine. It is very hard, going to be very hard to choose a favorite. I really like this quarry a lot. You guys got to tell me your favorite. I got one more thing to show you too. I really like this one. This is probably the softest that I've got. This would be a nice hat. And I like the persimmon tones one. Those two together are amazing. And I'm going to show you one more thing I got from them. Okay, so I did buy some wool soap from them. 
uh, dual soap. This was a pack of three. They did sell them separate by the bar. Um, it says Tough Woolen's small batch natural soap is made by hand with high quality oils and pure linen. Linen. I always have trouble with that word. For pampering um, your knitwear. So, what this is, this was $30. There's three bars in here. Um, there's three different flavors. What this is, is timeless materials created for hand knitters. I assume they mean crocheters too. I'm going to take it that they meant that to put that on there, but forgot. Okay. <laughs> what this is, uh, this is what it looks like. So it, this is a type of soap that you wash your, your wool items in. Um, I've often, if you've ever watched me, I often say that I hand wash everything that I make. And I do, whether it be acrylic or wool or silk or cotton, whatever. I use a certain um, thing called Soak, which I've mentioned many times, S-O-A-K, which you can buy on Amazon. It's where you put your garments in a sink or bathtub and you put a little bit of that soak in it. And all you do is soak your garments in it. You don't even have to rinse it. And then um, you soak them for like 20 minutes or something, wring them out, and let them dry. That's all that you have to do. So this is similar to that, except for it's in a bar form. So it says you lather the soap under cool running water while filling your sink up. Um, so you just kind of do this under your water and get some of it in your sink. And you let, it, you let your garment soak, whatever you make, a hat, whatever you're making, you know. Um, sweater whatever let it soak in 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 the water for 10 to 20 minutes so about the same you don't have to rinse it out and you don't have to do any agitation so it's pretty much just like the soak stuff except for it's in bar form so yeah no rinse needed and then you just wring it out and lay it out so i thought that was you know this was really cool because i never had it in bar form um it says if you want extra cleaning you can gently put this up against your your knitted things you know to or they, your crochet knitted things and do that with it otherwise you can just do this little dilly in your sink and get some in your water um so it's interesting i got three flavors here here's the first one it smells good it's mild it's a mild smell here is the second one Mm-hmm. Smells so smells better. A little bit stronger, but it smells good like that. And then there's one more here. Green Point Gardens. Okay, you can leave you one. I want to bust out into a little story here. You ever smell something and then it takes you back to a certain time in your life? Okay, I won't ever use this one. So I used to be, I don't know if you know, I used to be a landscape designer um, before I did YouTube. Um, and when there were times that I didn't have landscaping jobs to design, I, I worked in a nursery that had several, several, I mean many, many, many acres of, of gardens. Flower, you know, they had every type of flower, tree, bush, shrub, you know, perennial, anything that you can imagine they had it was in the garden and pathways with rocked pathways and barked pathways arbors with the most beautiful wisterias and clematises hanging down that you could ever see it was a sight you know it was a sight um and when i didn't have anything to do as far as like time there were times you know it was slow during the summer it was hot and you know you didn't get landscaping jobs i would go out into those acres of gardens and I would help upkeep them by, uh, you know, pulling weeds and rebarking the stuff. Um, you know, picking, cutting down bushes that needed to be cut down, deadheading flowers and stuff. And I enjoyed doing that because I love plants more than, and trees more than I do yarn, if you can believe that. Now, the reason why this smells, 
exactly like those gardens small acres of acres you know every season winter fall spring summer there was always something blooming but believe it or not there are flowers that bloom in the winter uh well where i live there is um there was always some type of interest in the garden and this is what it smelled like and i liked that going i liked doing that being surrounded by natural beauty that you can only i mean it's, it's hard to imagine the beauty that that i saw every day when i went to work it was magnificent and i love to help keep it beautiful and this is what i would smell all day when i worked in the gardens i'm gonna keep this to remind me of times gone by but a good time in my life you know that i have no more but my own choice i gave that up for my own reasons but i do love it and i won't use this one because like i said as soon as i smelt it it brought me straight back to the acres of magnificent beauty so thank you everybody for watching let me know in the comment section which one was your favorite I won't, you know, like I said, I won't keep all these. I think I probably, actually, might only keep one. I'll probably make a hat out of this one. These two, actually. <laughs> Although I do like so many of them. I can't keep them all. You know, I can't use them all. And I like to give back to people. And uh, then I, you know, I can't have yarn just laying around. That's never going to be used. So, it's better to give to someone that can, you know, that I know. But this is a problem. I know I have a, <laughs> I have many hats in this color, but I do like this one a lot. So more likely that would be the one that I keep. But I do love a lot of them. They're all very pretty. So let me know which one's your favorite. And thank you everybody for watching. I'll see you in my next video. Whatever it might be. Bye guys. Take care.